Well, hello, good people. Today, we're gonna focus on inpainting in focus. Now, getting right to it, the first thing you wanna do is head down to the bottom here, click on Input Image, and make sure you select the Inpaint tab. Now, if you're on Google Chrome, you can simply slide the image into this area here, or you could drag an image directly in here or click it to import your image. Down at the bottom here under method, you want to select in paint or out paint, which is the default. And then there are options here for improving details for the face and hands and eyes or modify content, which lets you add objects, change the background, so on and so forth. So we're going to select improve detail because with this image, you'll see that the face isn't really that defined and I want to improve that. And this is pretty normal for full body shots. Now, if you want to zoom into the area here, you could hold control and zoom in with your scroll wheel, but you have to put your mouse outside of the box here. You'll see that everything gets super big. And basically you're just zooming in the browser. And then we have our controls here. This is to undo your selection. So if I did that, we can undo it. This will clear your selection and then this will remove the image. And then you just have your brush size slider here. Now you could increase the brush size by holding control scroll wheel. And you see that I can adjust my size that way too. And the way in painting works is very simple. You just mask the area where you want some sort of change. So what's gonna happen here is that you're gonna isolate this area. And when you generate the image, only this area is gonna change. Anything outside of the mask won't be affected. Now, what I like about focus, it already gives you some options here. We can select highly detailed face or detailed girl face. Let's select that one. But there's also other options for hands and eyes. Now, you don't have to use this. You could just use the prompt that's in your box and you can manually put in some additional details here. But I find this works pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and generate four variations. As it generates, you're going to see the preview in the preview window and you'll see that the details of the face will be much more defined and it'll have more detail. Now, for those of you that are used to automatic 1111 or any of the other stable diffusion platforms, what you can do is go into the advanced tab here and you'll see a tab here for in paints. This is where you will find the in paint denoise strength. So much like automatic 1111, if you increase the strength, the change will be more drastic. And if you keep it low at like say 0.3 or 0.2, the image isn't going to change all that much, but the details will still be enhanced. Now here's the original image and I'm gonna zoom into the face here and you're gonna see that the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the results aren't that great, right? But if we switch to the in-painted version, you see that the face has much more detail in the eyes, the nose, the mouth. This is one of the other variations. And this can also work for hands, but it's always best to start with at least somewhat of a decent hand, but the process is pretty much the same. Let's do something a little bit different. I'm going to bring in this image and this time I'm going to select just your standard in paint mode. And in the prompt, we're going to put blue and purple hair and I'm just going to mask over her hair here. And then we'll go ahead and generate those images. Now you can already see in the previews, the blue and purple hair we're giving our character here. As we look at the variations, you see that we have different hairstyles, but obviously we got exactly what we wanted, the blue and purple hair. I quite like this one, that one looks cool. So there really is no limits to what you can do with in painting. We could change her blouse here if we wanted to, give her a different necklace, lots of room for creativity. One of the other things you can do is create something out of nothing. And what I mean by that is I'm going to just mask this area here and for the method I'm going to select modify content and in this area we're going to prompt for turtle on a rock. We'll go ahead and generate that and in the preview we start to see our turtle forming. Okay let's see the variations. Yeah these look really good. I don't know how this turtle got on there but uh, yeah it looks fabulous. So I'm going to do one more thing here. We're going to remove that image Put this one in here and I'm going to be generous in my masking here and in our prompt we're going to put bald eagle in flight landing 
let's put it roughly in this area here. What I'd like to see is a bald eagle kind of headed towards the turtle and he's kind of looking up like, hmm? <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the example. Now, I probably should have stated the direction of the bald eagle, but yeah, it looks pretty good to me. But one of the things I didn't account for was the reflection. Now, if we look at this one, you see that it's starting. If I were to redo this, I would make the mask a lot bigger to account for the reflection. For the most part, yeah, it looks really good. I'd be really happy with this result. So that's a quick introduction to in painting in focus. As you can see, it is really easy to do. And so far the results I've been getting have been fantastic. You could even utilize out painting to extend the scene if you wanted to. But for now, go on and try it for yourself and let me know in the comments below what else you want me to cover regarding in painting or anything else. Now, if you haven't seen it already, make sure to check out this video on how to face swap in focus. Till next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.